All right, guys, so we got to repair this 100 horsepower electric motor. So this comes out of a vertical hollow shaft pump setup. This is a six pole electric motor, which means it has 18 groups and it would be considered a 1200 RPM motor. Now this has six leads and a lot of people might look at this and just say it's probably a Y start Delta run. But one thing you can notice is that the leads are numbered one, two, three, seven, eight, and nine. We can see that our lead comes in here and it's connected to six coil ends. So this isn't actually a Y Delta connection at all. This is a six Delta part winding start connection. Now, if we cut one of those coil ends and we pull that sleeving off, we can see that this was wound with two wires. So when we start to strip this and we're pulling these coils out, whatever that coil number is, we're going to divide it by two, and that's going to be our number of turns. On our connection plate here, you can see the part winding start and the across the line start configuration. Now, in a Y start delta run motor, we are essentially connecting the motor for a higher voltage and running it on a lower voltage, and this allows us to get the load up to speed before switching the motor into its run connection. And a part winding start motor just doesn't work the same way. We have basically separated the winding into two separate circuits or halves or parts, part winding start. Another misconception with this is that we're doing the same thing as we're trying to get it up to speed. However, that's not the case. What we're actually doing is energizing half the winding, which will take half the current and produce half the torque. We aren't trying to rotate anything. Actually, this process happens quickly. What we are trying to do is basically put the load on the line to alert the power company that we're about to energize this motor and we need more power. And this can be adjusted in just a few cycles of your hertz. It's not uncommon that during that part winding start sequence that we don't get any rotation out of the motor at all. We're not trying to rotate it, we're just trying to draw current. So I'm showing a couple of the ways here that I come up with these coil sizes and I really want it to naturally just sit where our actual span is there. I don't want to have to stretch anything or bend anything. It'll be a lot less work for us to insert this winding. We are currently in the market for a new winding head. I did find a used one to replace the one I showed in this video, but even the used one is $10,000. So the current problem with this winding head is we have a lot of deflection on this. These parts are all loose, they're worn out, even some of them just kind of pull out, they're not even held in there anymore. We want all of our coils to be exactly the same dimensions, that way they fit right inside of each other and we can keep everything even, but you can see that we have a lot of deflection on those top extensions, and I was searching for a piece of wood that was 16 and 5 eighths, and I found this exact piece. So you got to kind of come up with some band-aids on this so that we can get this job done. So once I get one coil on there, you can see that top bar is bent down. We can wedge that piece of wood in there and just fully brace this winding so we can get a better even shape. Now this motor has 18 groups of four coils. 18 times four is 72. That's what's going to occupy our 72 slots. I recommend you tape these coils as close as you can to that center knuckle. That way you can get those wires to spread apart. It makes them a little bit easier to get into those slots. And obviously, as always, we want to be careful with these wires. We don't want to scratch them. They are enamel coated. If we do scratch these, we have the potential of having a short. So we use the same paper that we use to line the slots, a Nomex Mylar Nomex paper as scuff paper, and that can help us guide one side of the coil in, and the other side will be hand-fed a few wires at a time. Now you can see each group has two conductor sets coming off of that, and that's our start and end of that one group. So at the end of this, with our 18 groups, we're going to have 36 coil ends that ultimately come out as six. I also recommend buying the JBL Party Box 1000. Now remember that I said that this is basically going to be split into two halves, so we have one half of our connection done. This is the one half of our part winding start. So what I'll do to show you how this works is we'll take a 9 volt battery and we'll connect it to two of the three leads coming off that part winding. And if we run a compass through this, you can see our north and south poles all the way across this half of the stator. When we get to the other side where I haven't made these connections yet, we have nothing because we have no circuit over there. This is going to be treated as two totally separate circuits. It's important to pay close attention to these connections. They might not even use this as a part winding start. They may start it directly across the line, but it is important to put it back the way we took it out so we don't have issues with them in the future. Now to attach all of these leads, we're going to burn that enamel coating off of those magnet wires. We'll put our lead in there and then we'll use a brazing material to braze all of these leads together. We'll tape everything. We'll try to keep it as organized as we can. Before we tie this down, we're going to stick it on a winding analyzer so we can see our resistance between all of our leads here. And then the last step before we put this through that VPI process is we have to tie everything down or lace it and brace it, make sure everything's clear, make sure that our rotor is still going to fit through here and that we didn't make our winding too long. And then my last step here is I'd like to make sure that all these leads are even, all of our numbers are on the same line right across there, and then we'll sleeve up through that stator so somebody pulling on those wires isn't going to cut them and cause a grounding issue. We also finally received the last of the parts we were waiting for this 700 horsepower rewind and this electric motor here actually weighs more than that skid steer right there. So this is about 5,600 pounds sitting on this table. Now you're probably asking yourself who needs a 700 horsepower electric motor? Who needs Hellcat horsepower in an electric motor? This actually comes off of a compressor. And even in the electric motor world, this is still relatively small. Cheers guys.